We got the Windsurf editor here. Let's learn how we can actually build out an application that deploys to a real website link. No more local host 3000. I don't like it. And to make sure you can actually do this, I'm gonna provide you a free Google Doc that's gonna be in the description down below that's gonna walk you through step-by-step step everything I do in this video. Oh, you thought it was over with free value? Oh, no, no, a little bit more. On top of that, you can chat with this video, ask questions about this video, and use bumpups.com that gives you a free 60 minutes. Just put in this YouTube link and you're good to go. So basically, you found yourself on the easiest for beginner tutorial ever created for Windsurf Editor. Yes, I said that. Let's jump in. To get started here, simply download Windsurf Editor. Once you download it, sign up, put your preferences in, and you should see something like this. Coming back over to the Google Doc, let's do step one here, which is gonna be setting up our Windsurf project. What we're doing here is we're creating a React-based app. This is gonna allow us to create backends for this. This is gonna be our front end. A lot of this will make more sense. The first step though, obviously, is we gotta just generate the code. And then once we generate this app, we're gonna go ahead and connect it to GitHub. We're gonna connect it to a backend like Firebase. You're gonna see everything in this video. Safe to say, this is a full guide. So first, let's put this prompt into Cascada. Make sure you have right selected here. And then lastly, go ahead and name this folder whatever you want. This folder is where we're gonna store all the code. So when you deploy this as a web app or an actual software, this is an internal facing name. E.g., no one in the public will ever know this name. This is purely for your reference. But name is something that you'll recognize as this is my software or this is my website. Don't name it something random like one, two, three. I know some of y'all do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and rename this to something better. I'm gonna go ahead and say live website as that's the entire purpose of today's tutorial. We say create a React based app. I wanna have the directory be at this folder. There you go. Just initialize it, hit enter. When leveraging Cascada, either use Claude or ChatGPT 4.0. This is gonna provide us with the first terminal command here. We're gonna hit accept. Now chances are, if this is your first time ever running this kind of terminal command, you're gonna run into a very specific type of error. So let me help you out here. This error has showed up so many times in my comments. So I went ahead and created a whole second step for this. It's going to be install Node.js. This is going to let you run NPX and NPM commands. Basically, give us the ability to mess around with React and create React apps. So scrolling down here to step two, here it is. For Mac, Linux, and Windows, all you need to do is simply put in these lines in your terminal window. For reference, when I say lines, I'm referring to the darker hue backgrounds that you see here. And then when adding it to your terminal, you're going to simply come down here to your left, terminal, put the lines right there. Now, if you still run into issues, here's how you solve. Let's say I'm on Mac. All I want you to do is copy all of this. Copy. I'm going to create a new chat. In this chat, I'm going to keep it at right. And then I'm simply going to paste it in here and just be like, hey, I need to install Node.js and then let it walk you step by step on how to do that so you can do the following commands. Best part about this is that once you do this one time for your desktop or laptop, you'll never have to do it again. So every new app you create, you don't have to worry about this part. This is just installing dependencies that are required to run a React-based app. So let's go ahead and go to our past workflow here where we're creating our app still in the sense of our directory. So it looks like we ran into a little bit of an error here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just reproctor this. It's gonna put, okay, how I fix, hit enter here. And one really cool thing about Windsurf that I like about Windsurf that I've noticed comparative to other IDEs that integrate AI is that it's really good when it comes to terminal commands as terminal commands are a pretty fundamental part of app creation and software creation. I'm gonna go ahead and accept here and this is gonna create our React based app. Now what you'll notice is that when it's creating this, we're not seeing anything happen. You're like, is there a bug? What's happening? Is this gonna get fixed? Don't worry, all we need to do is simply open this folder when it's done. You'll know it's all working correctly when you see that last little line there called happy hacking, which basically means up to this point, I have successfully hacked your computer. All your data is mine. I'm just joking, but that, that's how you know it's working correct and we're good to go. So I'm gonna ignore this last line here, but NPM start allows us to run this in a local environment, which I'll show you real quick. For now though, we're gonna open this so we can see all the relevant code. Open folder. When you select that, you can either search for it or alternatively just find it. What you'll notice is that I called my live website. Here it is right here. I'm going to go ahead and select and open. You'll get prompted by Windsurf whether you trust these files or not. Obviously, we do. So we're going to say, yes, I trust this author. And we're in. We've successfully created our front end, which let's go ahead and show you real quick. As you saw the previous command here, we're going to come down to these little button right here. We're going to go ahead and go to terminal. Let's go ahead and shrink down Cascada. Get out of my way. Get out of my way. And then in order to run this, we simply just put an NPM start. But this isn't a live website link which is the entire purpose of this video. I'm gonna show you how to deploy this to an actual live website link as localhost 3000 isn't real, it's just fake. It's in, my, it's in my computer, okay? Therefore, up to this point though, pretty cool. Now we can actually edit the front end, get some cool code here. So let's go ahead and just create a real quick, nice little homepage here that we like. And then we'll go ahead and connect this to GitHub. What you think of GitHub, like putting the code in the cloud, as right now this folder is just found on my laptop. So if my laptop flies into the ocean and absolutely gets destroyed, I lose this code. But using GitHub, we can put it in the cloud. Obviously, GitHub has a bunch of other advantages when it comes to software development, which I dive into in other topics 
on this channel, so make sure you subscribe here. But for now, we're gonna do GitHub, then deploy to an actual backend. But first, I wanna make this look pretty. So we got our app.js here, and we got our app.css. Let's go ahead and talk to Cascada here and create something. To make my life easy, I'm gonna do this little at symbol here. I'm gonna do app.js. JS is gonna be the structuring and a little bit of logic in the sense of code. App.css is gonna make it look pretty, and we like pretty stuff. So app.js, app.css, we're going to say this. I'm not going to go too deep in prompting and how to prompt with AI in this lesson, in this video. I actually created an entire playlist dedicated to this, building out an entire front end. It's over three hours long. So I'll make sure I leave that playlist in the description down below. I'll have front end next to it. Therefore, if you want to learn a prompt and how to structure actual front ends, you can check that out. For now, here's a prompt. We've referenced both the files here of app.js and CSS. Create a landing page for a blog. I want to showcase one blog on how good corned beef hash is in the morning with some coffee. I'll put all the code, make the UI modern as Apple, as if Apple created it. If you don't know me, you just learned something new. I love corned beef hash, especially with some coffee early in the morning. Wake up. Did you wake up on time today or did you sleep in? <laughs> so if Cascada here, we're able to basically accept all changes here, which obviously I'm going to do. And then make sure when you accept changes, you hit accept. And then also hit control save or command save on your computer. So it actually saves the files and it'll reflect in the localhost 3000. It looks like we also have the ability to accept it over here. So I'm gonna say accept all. I'm gonna make sure I save again. And to be honest with you, I have no clue how this is gonna look, but that's part of the beauty of working with AI and code is that sometimes you get some really cool outputs. And as you can see from that very simple prompt here, I mean, this doesn't look bad at all. Like this was just one prompt and we already have a nice looking user interface here. Obviously our image here isn't corned beef hash, it's some pancakes. But close enough. I like it. So with all that done, let's go and go to step two here and connect this to our GitHub. For reference, if you want to make sure you're on the right playlist when I was referencing that front end playlist, this is it right here. You'll see that like three hour and 11 minute video, which basically combines all of these videos into one big one. And that goes over how to code with AI in the context of creating React based front ends that are scalable. All right, enough of that. With that all being said, let's go to step three here, which is going to be connecting GitHub. As you know, with these tutorials, you can find that Google Doc. Jump over to step three if you want to go in and copy the terminal commands. Come over to GitHub here, make an account completely free. When I say free, I mean free. Like they give a ton of perks for a free account. Then all we're going to do here is simply is go to repository and hit new. Now, personally, what I like to do is name the GitHub repo the same name I have on my local computer. So we went ahead and named that live website, as you saw before, like right up there, as you can see. Therefore, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Now, in this video, I'm going to go off a public repo. But in theory, what I suggest you to do is go for a private one. And I'll go ahead and reference a video in the description down below. This shows you how to do a private repo. The thing is, on my channel, I've done that like multiple times, showing you how to connect GitHub on a private repo. So just check out those videos. You'll be good to go. For this one, we're going to do public. Because honestly, I've never showed how to connect a GitHub repo to your local machine in a public way. Create repository. So once we've created our repo here, and just for a side note, repo stands for repository. Why do I keep saying that? Because I'm lazy. And I just want to say repo. Go ahead and copy this first line here, this code or terminal commands. Go ahead and copy it. Come in over here, select this right here, and then go to terminal, create a new terminal with this plus button right here, then paste it. Hit enter. And it looks like we ran to our first error here. So it's going to solve it with Cascada. We're going to copy all of this. We're going to create a new chat. And then what I like to do is we'll paste everything that we just put into the terminal so it has the most amount of context. I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm trying to commit to my GitHub for the first time, and I get, and then provide all the terminal. Hit enter. And then let's go ahead and just see if Cascade is this smart. I'm going to walk through step-by-step step using its suggestions. Get remote V. Okay. Accept. Wants to first remove the origin. Hit accept. And then it wants me to go ahead and create my own PAT token here, personal access token, which is actually correct so we can access it. So, so far, so good from Cascada. Just going to create our access token together. To do this, we're going to come over to our little face here and we're going to go to our settings. Scroll all the way to the bottom here and go to developer settings. In developer settings, we're going to go to personal access token, find green tokens. Here, go ahead and do generate new token. Put in your relevant password. With that, go ahead and put in your token name. So this could be anything, but name it something you remember. So I'll do test token here because I'll probably delete this after this video. Expiration, I'm going to do 30 days. And then we'll do a specific repository here, which will be the live website. Live website. And then when it comes to permissions here, just simply allow all, access all. Don't miss any of these. You have to give access to everything so you don't run into any errors when it comes to terminal. I'm going to go ahead and do that. There we go. And then on account permissions, same deal. Access to everything. For reference, some are only read only, but basically just choose the one that is the most you can do with it. Once that's all done, hit generate token. From there, it's going to show you your token. Make sure to copy that and get ready to use it. So what we're going to do here because we're having an access issue is we're going to use these lines right here. Add remote repository and push using a personal access token. Copy these lines and fill in the relevant variables, e.g. your username. What is your username? Come back to GitHub. That's going to be, for me, coffee fuel bump. 
You'll notice that it's also referenced here, Caffey field bump, live website git. Those relevant variables we need to put into these lines here. So your username for me would be Caffey field bump, live website, come down here, your username, Caffey field bump, et cetera. For the personal access token, this is we're gonna paste that token we just got right here. Remove those little brackets on the side. Okay, I'm gonna go and do that and then we're gonna paste it over. With all that done, I'm gonna close out of this chat. With this new terminal, I'm gonna paste all of those lines with the variables I wanted to put in. Then I'm gonna hit enter. I can't show this part as there's high risk variables, obviously, but hit enter. Once you do that, you should see a message like this. And if you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa why is there so many live websites? You just hit enter a couple times, you're good to go. And then when I reload the Git, there we go. We have successfully connected our local code to the cloud to a GitHub. Pretty nice. Make sure you leave a like if you felt like you learned something so far. So now that we've done that, let me just show you how to update your local code to your cloud code. And then we're gonna connect it to a live website. So we got our little app here. And maybe I'm like the perfect morning duo. I don't like that. I wanna change that. Come in over here to our app.js. I can simply just go right here and say the perfect morning. Command save. And then if I go over to my readme, maybe I just say I like coffee. So these are just different changes I'm doing locally in the code. And what you'll notice is that if I go to my GitHub and for example, I go to the readme, it doesn't say I like coffee. And that's because of the fact that, well, maybe GitHub doesn't like coffee, but in reality, we haven't pushed our local code to the cloud yet. Therefore, to do that, all we need to do is come to terminal and do three lines. And these lines you're gonna do for the rest of your life if you are a software developer and work with GitHub. So you're gonna remember them. At first, you're like, well, that's too many. But then over time, you're like, oh, this is easy. So we're gonna do git add, oh, not there, right here. Git add dot git commit dash m. And then we're gonna give a commit name. E.g., what did we change in the code? I mean, this could get random or be specific. So for example, read me changed, quotation mark. And then the final part we gotta do here is git push origin main. With all that done, the readme now says I like coffee and we are reflecting the most up-to-date branch from our local computer. Now, if you wanna learn more about that and how to effectively create software in this manner, go ahead and check out that playlist I referenced in the front end. But let's go ahead and start working on the back end here and actually deploy this to a live website link. To do this, go ahead and create an account with Firebase here and we're gonna say create project. Give a name to your project. So I'm gonna do live website again, as we've been naming our get that, our local branch, etc. We're gonna hit continue. For me, I'm gonna turn off Google Analytics, but for you, obviously, if you're creating your web app or software, you're gonna want this on. Create project. We are creating a Firebase project that's gonna allow us to deploy this to a real website. Hit continue, and we just gotta do a couple things here. So all of this right here is huge, especially for software development. There is a ton of stuff we can do with Firebase. We can create functions, databases, hosting, extensions, authentication, sign in, sign up. If that all sounds super cool to you, I'm gonna leave this in the description down below. I show you from zero lines of code and how to code with AI to create these kind of functionalities. We're talking about sign up, sign in, specific user databases, open AI functions, how to integrate artificial intelligence into your software and actually call the API and a ton of other stuff such as integrating Stripe payments, Google analytics, Google ad campaign conversion, and everything you would really need for software. Now this is a separate playlist though, so check that out. I know some of y'all are thinking right now, why does this guy have so many different playlists for so many different things? But that's because in order for me to show you how to actually code with artificial intelligence, it requires playlists and it requires 30 to 40 minute videos on specific topics. This is not the channel that's gonna be like a little five minute video, like top 10 AI tools. No, 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 no. I run a real software company and I'm showing you how to actually code a software when it comes to artificial intelligence as this is an entirely new field, new. All we need to do today though is deploy this to a website. So we're gonna do hosting. With hosting selected here, we're gonna say get started. Now what's great is that you can either follow my Google Doc or alternatively, you can follow the Firebase guide. So coming over to step five here, this shows you how to do it within the Google Doc, but also within the Firebase UI, it gives us a step-by-step -step guide as well. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and do npm install Firebase tools. Copy this. Come right over to our same terminal here. We're gonna paste that line, hit enter. What this is doing is that this is installing Firebase into our application. And what this allows us to do past that is create backend functionality. Everything I described before is dependent on Firebase. There's alternative ways of creating backends, such as AWS, but personally, I like Firebase. Once we do that, hit next. So the next thing we need to do is make sure we are logged into our Firebase account. This is gonna be the email you signed up with in Firebase. I'm noticing I'm saying Firebase a lot. Fire, fire, catch a liar, pants on fire. <laughs> To do this, go ahead and do Firebase login. For me, I'm gonna do log out and log in. As this is currently an active profile and I may have logged in in the past, but typically when you start a fresh day, you wanna go ahead and do Firebase log out, Firebase log in. This circumnavigates errors that could possibly appear that just make no sense. Firebase login, hit Y. This should lead you to this screen. Make sure the email right here is the email in your Firebase project. On top of that, 
hit allow. Once you see this, you're good to go. Next, we need to initialize it. So we're gonna copy this. What Firebase init does is it allows us to enable different features like I described before, such as Firestore, functions, app hosting, hosting, storage, emulators, like a bunch of different stuff we can do to create really cool software. All we care about is hosting. So we're gonna do space here and hit enter. Then we're gonna do use an existing project since we've already created it. The project we're gonna use is gonna be the live website dash C1BFE, which we identified before, enter. Do you wanna use your public directory? We'll say yes or just enter. Configure as a single page app, we're gonna say Y. Set automatic builds for now, we're gonna say no. File public index.html already exists or write. We're gonna say yes. So far, so good. So there's a couple things you should see here. First thing you should see, the Firebase circ, firebase.json, looking good so far. Leading us to our final thing here to make sure it all connects, which is gonna be next. We're gonna be using this Firebase deploy later in this tutorial, but for now, we need to set up our firebase.js. To do that, come up to your top left here, say project overview, and we're creating a web app today. So we'll say web. The name of our web app, we're gonna give the exact same name, live website, hit register app. So this is gonna be blurred out for obvious reasons, but this is relevant variables that we need to start leveraging. But first, let's go ahead and install Firebase. We're gonna copy this. Paste that in terminal, hit enter. Looking good so far. So as notated in the Google Doc, let's do our next line here, which is gonna be touch source firebase.js. This is just basically creating the firebase.js file. Hit enter, and then we should see here. There we go. Now with that done, copy this code and paste it into firebase.js. And it does look like I kind of messed up here with the index.html. We don't want to overwrite that. But in order to solve that, it's no biggie. All we got to do is go to our GitHub. And this is why GitHub is so important. We can simply use older files to overwrite newer files that don't work. So coming over to GitHub here, I'm going to simply go to public. I'm going to go to index.html because this is the older code here. I'm going to hit copy. And then I'm going to just paste it here. Nice. And then the last step here in order to deploy is going to be two commands. It's going to be npm run build. This is going to build out our front end. And then it's going to be Firebase deploy. This is going to run our back end. Every single time you deploy your application, you'll run these two commands. So we'll do npm run build, and then we'll do Firebase deploy. And there we go. We should see our live website at this URL, hosting URL. If I copy that and we paste it, we actually get a white screen, which don't worry, I'm used to this kind of error. Basically, there has been an overwrite when it comes to the build and the public folder. So if you put in that link and you get this, Let's solve it. So here's the situation. When you run into errors, especially when dealing with Firebase, provide these files, firebase.json, firebase.js, your public folder, index.js. And then I simply ask why when I do Firebase deploy, I see a white screen on the website link. What's super cool is that this goes through the workflow and found my solution. Notice that we're building to the wrong folder here, accept all changes. And then with that, it's giving me the next command here. So we're gonna do npm run build again, and then we're gonna do Firebase deploy again. There we go. And let's check out our live website, boom. With that live website link you see in the top left, we have officially created a website that anyone can access on the entire internet. Now, some of y'all might be looking at that live website link and be like, yo, Corbin, that looks horrible. I don't like web app. Don't worry. Check out that one front end playlist I referenced earlier. I show you how to put a custom URL that we can start using there. And of course, if you leave any comments like, yo, I wanna make a sign up or have it so that users can access an open AI function for an output or analyze a PDF, like whatever you want to do when it comes to software development, check out that backend playlist. That's where I show you step-by-step step how to do that. For now that we've successfully created an app with a backend, Corn Beef Hash, I'll see you in the next video. The perfect morning, coffee, Corn Beef Hash, Tabasco sauce, yum.